Ghost Soldiers, the epic account of World War II's greatest rescue mission, 2001, is a historical non-fiction book by Hampton Sides. The book narrates the perilous mission undertaken behind enemy lines to liberate more than 500 Allied prisoners of war from a prison camp in the Philippines. After the Japanese massacre prisoners in another camp, the stakes for liberating this camp are even higher. Sides juxtaposes the experiences of the POWs with the rangers sent to rescue them. The book opens with a survivor's account of the massacre and his escape from the prison camp Palawan. The prisoners had been herded into their bomb shelters, doused with fuel, and set alight. Of the 30-odd escapees who escaped the death trap by scrambling through the barbed wire fence, only about 11 of them ultimately survived to tell the story of what really happened. The official Japanese story was that the prisoners died in an American air raid, the survivors told of a cold-blooded massacre. After the destruction of the Palawan camp, the American military turned its attention to the Kabanabuan camp, and the 500 American POWs living there in fetid conditions. If such a thing happened at one camp, there was no telling that it would not happen again. Major Lapham, leader of the local guerrilla fighters, was concerned that if the Japanese believed an invasion was imminent, they would kill all their prisoners, and themselves, to avoid capture. Colonel Muchi and his rangers are chosen for the rescue. Sides recounts the loss of the Bataan Peninsula. With hospitals operating beyond their capacity, rampant disease, dwindling rations, almost no medicine left, the besieged Bataan was a lost cause of carnage. Roosevelt gave up on it, preferring to concentrate more on the European theater. MacArthur was stunned into days-long silence before he rallied, only to be transferred to the safer Australia, and General Edward King was given command. King had no choice but to surrender to the Japanese, even though he had orders from MacArthur to the contrary. Yet, King deemed that without support and provisions, the battle was lost. When he surrendered, there was confusion in the ranks as to how they would proceed. Some soldiers joined the guerrillas, others escaped by boat, but a vast majority of the inhabitants knew they would be captives. They just did not know what that would look like, or what would happen to them. The march to prisoner of war camps that awaited these captives was long and brutal, with those unable to keep up being bayonet and left for dead. Once at the camps, treatment would not improve. Nevertheless, they would find some unlikely allies and help coming from Manila, including several women who were adept at fundraising and moving supplies to the camp. One woman, Claire Phillips, aka, Clara Fuentes, aka, High Pockets, aka, America's Mata Hari, was an American spy who not only passed information gleaned from Japanese officers who visited Club Tsubaki, but she routinely had food and medicine smuggled into the camp. For a brief time in January, the prisoners would be left nearly to their own devices as their usual guards were reassigned. Threatening terrible death for all if even one man escaped, they left the prisoners in their camp with minimal supervision. The prisoners raided the food supplies and after a couple of weeks, general health improved. New Japanese regiments treated the camp like a supply fort and would come and go with little interference in camp life. It was not to last, as the Japanese reoccupied the camp and restored order by mid-January and by the end of January, fear that they would all be executed returned in full force. Meanwhile, the rangers made progress behind enemy lines and finally laid eyes on Kabanatuan. What they saw surprised them, far from a heavily armored stronghold, the camp did not appear to have any defensive advantages. However, the camp did have one thing that made the rangers pause, it was in the middle of nowhere, with a lot of open space on all sides, making the camp very hard to sneak up upon. The rangers knew that in order to be successful and to rescue the prisoners before their captors decided to kill them all, they would have to take the camp by surprise. They spent an afternoon and part of an evening slithering through the grass and rice paddies to surround the camp. At the same time, a distracting flyover by a menacing-looking American plane called a Black Widow kept prisoners and guards alike looking at the sky, and not on the ground. When the rangers began their assault, they took the guards by surprise, as well as the prisoners, who did not immediately realize that they were being rescued. Rescue did not mean the ordeal was over. The POWs were loaded into a ship called the SS General Anderson and became targets of the Japanese propaganda machine. The raid on the camp and the escape of so many prisoners made them marked men. The media reported on their location with eerie accuracy, but by March, they made it across the Pacific to California unmolested. 
the epilogue includes paragraphs on all the major survivors in the book, describing what ultimately happened to them. The book won the PEN Center USA Award for Research Nonfiction in 2002. Sides also provides maps of the relevant areas and the routes the rangers took to get there to help elucidate the sheer bravado of the plot. There are also two photo inserts, containing a multitude of black and white photographs of prisoners, major players, the Bataan Death March, and more. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.